When we learn about entropy in school or at the university, we often see only one side of this complex and fascinating concept. For example, if you studied physics, you are probably already familiar with the concept of heat depth of the universe. If you studied chemistry instead, you probably learned that entropy can tell you whether reactions occur spontaneously or not. In computer science, entropy is used to measure the amount of information carried by a signal. There are so many ways to define and apply the concept of entropy that we might start to question if we are actually still talking about the same thing. So, in this video, we will try to create a unified map of the concept of entropy across many disciplines, and we will explore the full landscape of its various applications. The concept of entropy was first introduced in the field of thermodynamics in the mid-19th century by the German physicist Rudolf Clausius. Clausius defined entropy as a measure of the amount of lost energy that cannot be converted into mechanical work. In particular, the second law of thermodynamics states that the entropy of a closed system always increases over time. This means that time has a well-defined direction, which is the direction where entropy increases. At some point in the distant future, the entropy of the universe will eventually reach its maximum. This is known as the heat death of the universe, a state where no energy transformations can take place and time itself would cease to exist. A few years after Clausius came up with the concept of entropy, the American scientist William Gibbs was already applying the idea of entropy to the field of chemistry. In chemistry, entropy helps us understand whether a chemical reaction can happen on its own without any external influence. The Gibbs free energy equation is used to calculate the energy available in a chemical reaction. It takes into account the change in enthalpy, which is a measure of the heat involved in a reaction, and the change in entropy. The Gibbs free energy equation tells us whether a chemical reaction can occur spontaneously or if it requires an input of energy. Combustion, for example, is a spontaneous reaction because the change of Gibbs free energy is negative. Once the reaction begins, it continues on its own until either fuel or oxygen is gone. The statistical meaning of entropy and its relation with the idea of disorder was first introduced in statistical mechanics by Ludwig Boltzmann in the late 19th century. Boltzmann was one of the first physicists to recognize the connection between macroscopical properties like temperature or pressure and the behavior of atoms and molecules. Boltzmann figured out that entropy measures how many times we can rearrange molecules in a system to describe the same macroscopic state. Let's say we have 10 molecules and 2 rooms. We can put all molecules in one room and none in the other, and there is only one way to do that. On the other hand, if we distribute 5 molecules per room, there are many ways to do so. Every permutation is a different state from a molecular perspective, but nothing really changes at macroscopic level. This means that the level of disorder or entropy in this case is much higher than in the first case. The statistical interpretation of entropy is powerful and versatile. It is not surprised that from this point on, entropy has aggressively invaded many other fields of science. In the late 40s, Claude Shannon applied the concept of entropy in information theory to measure the amount of uncertainty in a message or signal. From information theory, Shannon's entropy has found application in cryptography, data transmission and data compression. Let's imagine we have a secret message that contains only the letters A and B. If we know in advance that the probability of occurrence of A or B is 50%, then every single letter in this message would contain a high level of information and will be needed to understand the message. On the contrary, if the probability of A was 90% and B 10%, then we would be more confident in guessing that a missing letter is A. This message carries a lower level of information because the occurrence of each letter hardly adds any value to our knowledge. Statistically speaking, we say that the second message has a lower entropy. In the extreme case where the probability of A was 100%, then the message would carry no information at all, as its exact content would be known in advance, and the entropy of the message in this case would be zero. Entropy has also found applications in economics and finance. In macroeconomics, entropy can be used as a measure of income inequality. 
a society where everyone has the same income would be a society that maximizes its entropy. Entropy is a measure of uncertainty, so it can also be used in finance and investment strategies as a measure of risk. In finance, the traditional measure of risk is the standard deviation, which assumes that the return on investment is normally distributed. This is unfortunately not always the case. Entropy is a better measure of risk, because it considers all possible outcomes, not just those that fit a normal distribution. In the mid-20th century, entropy made its debut in biology. In 1944, Erwin Schrödinger introduced the idea of negative entropy. In his book, Schrödinger argues that life is the nemesis of entropy, in the sense that living organisms constantly struggle to decrease their level of inner disorder. The birth of a child is a typical example of how nature reduces its level of disorder. To create order out of chaos and maintain their complex organization, living systems need to export entropy to their environment, while simultaneously importing energy to decrease their own entropy. Let's go back to physics for a moment. In astrophysics, entropy has been adapted to study one of the most mysterious objects in our universe, black holes. Scientists cannot see what's inside black holes, but they found a way to study them by looking at their surface. They discovered that the surface area of a black hole is related to the amount of information inside it. This information is measured by the wittgenstein hawking entropy. In quantum mechanics, entropy is a measure of the information shared between different parts of a quantum system. While in seismology, scientists try to predict earthquakes by analyzing seismic signals and identifying increasing entropy patterns. In more recent years, entropy has crossed the boundaries of disciplines far from its origin. In medicine and neuroscience, entropy is used to understand how information is processed in the brain and how it influences our behavior. In psychology, the entropy model of uncertainty makes use of the idea of entropy to understand how uncertainty in our life can be a source of anxiety. Evolving from the concept of entropy used in information theory, entropy is now applied also in linguistics to study the frequency and distribution of sounds and grammatical structures across languages. This helps linguists understand why some languages have more common features than others and how different populations develop linguistic features over time. Other fields where the term entropy can be found include, for example, philosophy or religion. Do you remember that we talked about the heat death of the universe? Well, many religions have their own version of the apocalypse, which is characterized by chaos, destruction and ultimately annihilation. As you see, the applications of the concept of entropy are many, and likely this list is not exhaustive. Of course, if you have further ideas or you know about other subjects or models where entropy is used, please feel free to add your comments below. And if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like and subscribe. Up next, Game Theory.